This will go over the old revenue recognition rules, percentage of completion and completed contract. Under the new rules, these still exist, but they're just called something different. A lot of terminology changed with the new rules. But this, this was made a few years ago, and it's being revised for this video for this year's class. So percentage of completion. This is when reasonable, dependable estimates of progress are available. It's calculated in proportion of the percentage of work completed, so it's earn as you go, how much of the work is done. With a completed contract method, that's when dependable estimates are not available. Now, it's not GAAP because it does not follow the matching principle, but because you can't estimate those, make those estimates, you are allowed to use it, but it is forbidden under IFRS. Now, looking at a few basics first, traditional journal entry, accounts receivable, sales, cost of goods sold, inventory, so you record revenue first and then match it with the expense. When you're selling services, often it's easier to calculate revenue if you record the cost first, because calculate revenue based on the expenses incurred, so really you're doing it backwards. So just keep this in mind when you're going through the, the percentage of completion. It really is recording the expense first and then calculating what revenue should be. Rule of conservatism will always exist if you have a loss, even if you're using the completed contract method where you don't record any revenue until you're done, you have to record the loss immediately. So the key to calculating revenue, you have to earn it first. The work has been done. You're going to have a lot of extra information. Ignore progress billing and cash received. You only want to focus on actual cost incurred. Now, the construction in progress is an inventory account. It's very similar to works in process. There is also a separate cost of construction cost account. <coughs> CIP inventory is recorded at sales value. Now, this is going to differ from works in process. Remember, your merchandise inventory, your finished goods, is recorded at cost. Then you sell it at a profit. But CIP, you want that at valued at its sales value. So not only do you record cost, you capitalize any gross profit to it also. Now this will review an, uh, a concept review problem from an old textbook. It differs from what we're using now, but it's still a very good example. Contract price, $8 million. Estimated length of the project, 18 months. So now, even though 18 months is a year and a half, because of when it began, what time of year, it spanned over six, three fiscal years. You have to determine the amount of gross profit or loss to be realized in each of those three years based on the percentage of completion method or calculating over time as the new terminology talks. Prepare necessary journal entries for each of the four events. And doing it in this order, I would put this in your notes, do it this in this order and then you won't get lost. There's a lot to go through. So looking at an example, all I did was update the years. Actual costs incurred, $1.5 in year one. Actual costs incurred to date, it's year one, it's zero. So cumulative, it's your third line. At that point, I'm estimating another 4.5 for total cost. You're given billings made during the year cash collection. So now look at your journal entries, giving you some hints in red. Record costs incurred, that's simply cash out. That's going to be your credit. Your debit is your capitalization to CIP, that inventory account. Again, the other examples here in red are just your for hints. With all this information, this is what you focus on. You're given billings. It doesn't matter when you sent the bill out or if you got paid. That doesn't mean you earned it. You want to focus on work performed. So calculating revenue in year one, focus on expenses first. Remember, you do it backwards. How much work has been done divided by how much work you expect to have to do. So you're 25% finished. Multiply that by your sales price. Your sales price is going to be your revenue. So you've earned $2 million this year based on the re revenue recognition rules. Contract price eight, less cost six, total estimated gross profit. How much work have you done? 25%, which means you can capitalize into CIP 25% of that two million. And the best way to go through long-term construction contracts is to use T accounts. We have four balance sheet accounts, 
for income statement accounts. Now, understand the cash account is being used only for demonstration purposes. In practice, in real life, you would have many different accounts. You'd have many payable accounts. But this is just for a financial accounting demonstration. I don't want to get into cost accounting. So year one, incurred cost, cash went out the door, I capitalized those costs into CIP. Here is your journal entry where it says A16, that stands for 2016 year A of the four journal entries in the order. B, your second journal entry, you record revenue of $2 million. Cost incurred 1.5, that is your gross profit of 500000 this year that will be capitalized into your CIP account. And here is your journal entry. Third entry, I have to send a bill, accounts receivable, and now I have a new contra asset account. Now with merchandising, you would have a current accounts receivable and then you'd record revenue, but you've already recorded revenue and you don't want to double count. This billings on CIP is an extra contra asset to help prevent double counting. I use this. This is C, my third entry in the year 16, 2016. Here's your entry. It is a contra asset to CIP. Fourth entry, they paid me. Accounts receivable went down, I got cash. Here is your entry. Year two, 2017. Now cumulative costs are six million, but costs have gone up, inflation, maybe some delays in the construction. Now the estimated costs are going up, which means my profit's going to go down. It's up to 7.5. What do I do? Again, focus on cumulative costs incurred to date divided by total cost expected. How much am I done now? 80%. So I've, I rightfully have earned 6.4. But remember, I've already recorded $2 million, so this year I record $4.4. Be careful not to double count your revenue. Okay, now let's look at gross profit. Hmm, we've got a problem. Contract price 8, less total cost. Estimated 7.5. So now my gross profit estimated went from $2 million to $500,000. Multiply that by how much I've completed, $400,000. Oh, now that's over two years. I've already recorded five, so technically this represents a loss in year two. So if I add the loss, first record the 4.5 to date, then that loss look down at the construction in progress where I debited the 500,000 now I have to credit the account because I want this CIP valued at its sales value. Because costs have incurred, increased, I have to make this adjustment. Revenue on construction, 4.4. Total for the total year to date, the 80%, 6.4. Costs incurred, 4.5. To balance the journal entry, I credit CIP. Finally, send out my bill, and then I'm paid four million. Year three, we're done. Costs went up a little bit more, but I'm done. I'm still making a profit, just not the two million that I had hoped for. Again, calculate, even though you know you're done, you know you're 100% complete, run the numbers anyway. This shows me your work. 100% complete. Total revenue should be over three years, $8 million, But this year, I record 1.6 because I've already recorded 6.4. Gross profit <coughs> comes to 
50,000 this year. Follow the numbers. And there's a separate PowerPoint you can go through a little more slowly than this. Or you can stop this video and make some notes. Again, let's look at the T accounts. In, for the A entry in 2018, for the cash I paid, costs incurred, capitalize those costs into CIP. Second entry, revenue 1.6 million, cost 1.55 million. That leaves a, a gross profit in year three of 50,000 because I want CIP valued at its sales value, cost plus gross profit. And we'll talk about why in a minute. Record my billings. And then finally, payment. Okay, now you're done. The construction is done. There's always work left over for the accountant. We need to look at our totals. Projects over those. So now let's total some numbers. Let's look at what we have. Notice cash. Cash went out for 7.55 million. Cash came in for 8 million. Counts receivable. I billed 8 million. I was paid 8 million. Revenue, 8 million. That's my sales price. Cost of construction down below the expense, 7.55 million. So you can see the difference in kind of back into what my gross profit is. Billings, I billed for 8 million, I collected 8 million. Construction in progress, now the value is 8 million. This is why, because I've got to take this off my books when I sell it. So I want it at its sales price, not at its cost. So the cash went up for 450,000, accounts receivable is zero. And this is just a simulation of closing over three. Of course, in real life, you would close every year. And as you can see, the total profit, 450,000. I have to remove the asset, remove revenue on long-term construction contracts is gonna close. Cost of construction is going to close. Income summary will close. Now, again, the above was for, for demonstration only. This is a three-year project. Billings on construction progress is then closed out with a debit. Construction in progress is then closed out with a credit. This is why I wanted my CIP valued at sales value, not cost, for this to make this journal entry simple. Now, how do I present this over time with my balance sheet? Well, if your costs are higher than progress billing, this is a current asset, cost and profit and excessive billing. If your costs are less than billing, it's okay, you can bill ahead of time, but you will have to record it as a liability because you build higher amount than what you've actually incurred in cost. So watch your balance sheet presentation. If it's a positive balance, it's an asset. If it's a negative balance, it's a liability. So to calculate the percentage of completion, you calculate revenue, calculate gross profit, journal entries, cash and CIP, expense revenue and gross profit to CIP, billings out, and accounts receivable up, cash in, and accounts receivable down. So do the journal entries in this order, and it'll be much easier.